Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Sunday the 13th of September 2020. And yesterday we published our Gold and Silver Weekly Update for the week ending the 11th of September. And we've placed links to this video in the description box below. Now in yesterday's update we pointed out that Brent crude prices closed at $39.83, down $2.83 on the week. And WTI crude closed at $37.33, that was down $2.44 on the week. And has now both prices broken that $40 level to the downside. You see, we've seen since January of this year, both Brent crude and WTI crude prices fall from the 60 to not quite $70 region to single digit figures for a very brief spell in April, but more recently remaining above $40. Well, that appears now to have changed, and reports published today suggest that this week's meeting of OPEC Plus will be an important one, as the demand for oil, the global demand for oil, has subsided again primarily because of the re-emergence of COVID-19 and a consequential fall in demand. This coupled with Libya now likely to reopen its oil markets once again to the world, this will undoubtedly place downward pressure on prices and thereby, of course, as one can naturally assume, on inflation rates. And it will be interesting to see if OPEC plus cuts output or let things ride for now. So let's take a look at a Bloomberg article published today which addresses this very situation. There have been more articles published by them but this one is perhaps the more pertinent. Bloomberg article dated September 13th 2020 11.46 a.m. GMT plus one. Headline OPEC bid to rescue oil market falters as demand bounce fades. It was meant to be the week when OPEC nations gathered in Baghdad to celebrate the cartel's six decades as a dominant force in global oil markets. Instead, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries and its allies will convene online and reflect on whether the coronavirus has thwarted their best efforts to keep the market afloat. After reviving crude prices from an unprecedented collapse over the spring, OPEC Plus is seeing the recovery stall and fuel demand falter as the deadly pandemic surges once again. Prices slipped below $40 a barrel last week for the first time since June. On Thursday, Saudi Arabia and Russia, the leading members of the alliance, will chair a monitoring meeting to assess whether the vast production cuts, which they started easing in August, are still staving off an oil glut. New signs of exporters reneging on the deal aren't helping. There were some major assumptions built in on where demand and the recovery would be now, and it just hasn't happened, said Mohammad Dawaza, an analyst at research firm Medley Global Advisors LLC. If I'm OPEC and if I'm Saudi Arabia, I would be concerned. The relapse is a source of acute financial distress for OPEC nations, from poorer members like Nigeria and Venezuela, who need crude prices far above current levels to cover government spending, all the way up to wealthy Gulf monarchies like Kuwait. Riyadh and Moscow had anticipated that a resumption in global economic activity, combined with the supply curves, would sharply deplete the hoard of surplus oil inventory accumulated during lockdowns. But there are growing signs the market isn't tightening so fast. The peak holiday driving season has passed in the United States, yet rush hour traffic is still sparse and crude inventory stubbornly high. In India, the third biggest consumer, transport fuel sales remain 20% below year-ago levels last month. Even in China, where refiners binged on crude at the height of the crisis, 
buying has slowed. Trading houses are hiring oil tankers on long-term contracts once again to store surplus barrels. And Libya, which is exempt from the output cuts because of a civil war, that's all but shut down its oil industry, may resume exports soon, according to US officials. The North African country's production has slumped to less than 100,000 barrels a day from 1.1 million at the end of last year. The downturn isn't yet severe enough for OPEC Plus to reimpose the full output cutbacks made in the second quarter, according to Helima Croft, Head of Commodity Strategy at RBC Capital Markets LLC. After tapering the cuts last month from 9.7 million barrels a day to 7.7 million, a sense of inertia means there will be a high bar for any new action, she said. For the men who reside in the palaces and the presidential halls, there is a price at which they make a panicked phone call, said Croft. The question is, what is the price? In theory, OPEC's task should get easier next quarter as demand for winter fuel kicks in and a gradually mending global economy rekindles the need for road and aviation fuels, data from the International Energy Agency in Paris shows. But as the outlook continues to darken, the Saudis may choose to underscore their readiness to act. We expect a strong statement that if markets continue to weaken, the producer group will be prepared to trim output further, said Ed Morse, Head of Commodities Research at Citigroup Inc. In the meantime, the Kingdom will press on with its mission to enforce rigorous implementation of the curbs. Saudi Energy Minister Prince Abdulaziz bin Salman has achieved an unusual degree of success in this area, bringing habitual quota violators like Iraq and Nigeria to heal by assigning them compensation cuts to make up for earlier cheating. The two countries have so far implemented only a fraction of those extra curbs and Baghdad is expected to seek more time to deliver the rest. Nonetheless, the punishment itself has apparently spurred them to previously unseen levels of compliance with the original quotas. Just as they tow the line, Riyadh is encountering a new challenge from an unexpected quarter. The United Arab Emirates, traditionally a staunch ally, has admitted to flouting its limits by roughly 20%, while promising to correct the error. Export data from consultants like Petro Logistics SA and Kepler SAS indicate the UAE's transgression could be many times bigger. The Saudis will likely try to discreetly address the misbehaviour of their Gulf partner, which for now appears a minor blemish in an otherwise well-executed strategy, said RBC's Croft. The bigger issue is whether OPEC Plus responds promptly enough if the deterioration in oil demand continues. Judged on compliance, I think they could take a victory lap, she said. The real challenge is... Is the organisation nimble enough? If this really does stall out, how fast can they react? So, lower prices ahead are indeed quite possible, at least until the Covid situation is contained. That said, and as we mentioned before reading the article, this could indeed have another dampening effect on inflation short term. This could then potentially mean that central banks will add additional stimulus to the global economy to ensure the world does not enter into a deflationary cycle, which arguably, therefore, will mean positive results for precious metal prices as more and more currency is produced and therefore becomes undervalued. That said, of course, no single economic determinant will dictate price and it's also extremely difficult to calculate exactly where the chips, so to speak, will eventually fall. However, we see this as positive news for precious metals, taking the medium-term view in mind. What do you think? Do share your thoughts. 
Thank you so much for listening, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell sign so that you're notified of our videos as and when they are published. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative, and if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Thank you.